Hey everybody, this is Pastor Megan, and look at that boundary of water. We're at the bay. I know you can't see me, but I promise I'll move in a second. Look at how pretty it is. Sorry about the wind. Pretty! That's San Francisco over there, and we're on the other side. We're in the Berkeley side, and I'm going to sit over here with Amanda. Aren't we great? Oh, Hey, folks. It's fun to be in the same place at the same time. Dun, dun, dun. So remember that image that I showed you back there of the water that is the boundary between this side of the bay and that side of the bay. This side is Berkeley and that side is San Francisco. And we thought when we saw the waters, because we love water. We do love what water. What do you love about water? Baptism yeah. and forgiveness. Amanda loves baptism. It puts us in right relationships. So in our faith life, water erases the boundary like an etch-a-sketch machine and here, yeah and here water is setting up the boundary setting yeah. aside two areas one from another so that the particular thing that is berkeley can be berkeley and the particular thing that is san francisco can be san francisco and they both then get to have their own beautiful flair like if you go to berkeley you can go to telegraph you can they have like different laws about what's hippiedom and each city gets to have its own beautiful character and we happen to think that this body of water that separates them is part of what makes them beautiful it helps them each have their own individual identity and one of the things that we wanted to just take a second to chat about because it's not usually very cool or hip to talk about boundaries but we have a lot of boundaries that we follow as pastors and as those who just watch our Bible study that doesn't suck it, you might get the impression that anything goes, right? That we wanna break every rule, that we're super radical, that we don't follow any rules at all. But we are very ethically guided, principled pastors. And so we might swear every once in a while, that's me, not her. Um, and we might encourage the Bible to be more welcoming then other people might interpret it. And we might talk about some passages, like we don't give them as much credibility as some other colleagues, or we might interpret them in a different way than other colleagues. Yeah. But at the end of the day, when it comes to how we interact with people- And, and in our work, in and our in our, our work, lives. And how we keep confidences, and how we do some activities with some people and some activities not with other people, we have to maintain a code of ethics that is trying to make certain that people can be uniquely people and we can be uniquely ourselves and that those things don't get intermingled and messied up. Yeah, because we're kind of like friends to people, but it's our work. And we will always know more about our congregants than they know about every bit of our lives because they're what's important when we're at work. And God is what is important when we're all together as community. And so there's ways in which we choose what we share we do some of our own work and our own counseling before we come into community. We invite all people to be a part of our sharing because we particularly believe in the priesthood of all believers. So you might find that people come into our Bible study community, people come into the, the information that we share online, some of our videos, um, and know that it's not like politics. We haven't like vetted everyone to make sure that they're perfect and we don't need everyone to have perfect lives because goodness gracious, God's the one who may or may not care about that in the end. That's not our job. We just want to be a part of facilitating conversations. But we also wanted you to know that we do this in a, in a healthy, boundaried way. And there's a method to our madness. A lot of what we talk about and how we talk about it is rooted in PTSD care. And we probably don't talk about the things that are the most vulnerable in our own lives because we want to work on it before we talk about it publicly. So, so be aware that um, pastors, for those of you who are out there who or those who are training to be pastors, who watch Bible study that doesn't suck just to kind of get an alternative or maybe justice oriented kind of view, keep in mind the fact that both Megan and I have our own counsel we have our own therapists that we go to on a regular basis. We have prayer community. We have accountability partners, people that we've walked with within our community for years and even a decade or more who hold us accountable to making certain that we are keeping in good ethical practice. Um, we serve as accountability partners to one another. I have another accountability partner. I have my own therapist. These are the yeah. things that we do. I have social workers. I check in about social worker things. There's mandated reporting questions where we check in with adult protective services. I keep a a logbook. I write down every mean thing that someone says to me that they might say someday I did something bad or if an encounter goes strangely or if I have to have a conversation um, about money um, just to make sure everything's above yeah. the board and ethical because 
living in community is hard. Even when you're the kindest, nicest, bestest ever. Nope. So here's part two. Sorry, I got a phone call interruption. <laughs> so, um, in closing. Well, can just, I just say one more thing? Go for it. Because I really love ethics. I just want you to know <laughs> that as you think about how you're going to do justice work in the world, I want to encourage you to, to do the justice that you can, not all the justice opportunities that come to you. Do be the voice and the ability to listen on issues that aren't going to trigger you. And if you can, try to be as authentic and a model of kindness and healthy community as you can to other people. Because the more we can model being non-sucky to other people, the less sucky there will be in the world, right? And we're, we don't only just want Bible study that doesn't suck. We want pastors that don't suck. We want families that don't suck. We want politics that don't suck. We want our whole world to suck less. And it takes all of us living ethically, living with accountability, and living in safe spaces together to achieve that. So. Thank you for, for taking the time to listen to a very kind of serious message. And it's something we hadn't been able to address and is harder to do when we're in different spaces. Um, that's what I think about that. So remember your baptism. Remember God loves you no matter what. And maintain your boundaries. That's right. Do the things you need to do to keep yourself and the people around you safe emotionally, physically, spiritually, sexually, all of those different ways. That's right. So that our world will get to where it sucks less. And do the best you can, the best you can. Amen and amen. Love boldly, forgive more boldly still. Thanks, folks. Peace out.